Whether or not you're studying architecture, learning to manage your time is crucial to becoming successful at whatever you're doing in life. You may be talented and creative, but if you don't know how to work efficiently, all your efforts will go to waste. Conversely, if you don't consider yourself as the most skilled or talented, knowing how to be efficient with your time grants you the ability to fine tune your craft. And in this video, I will show you how to do just that. Architects have to be really good at managing their time. Imagine this, a person contacts an architect to possibly commission them for the design of a building. After some conversation, the potential client inquires about how long the type of building that he has requested would take to design and construct. Now, buildings are very complicated things with many components, so it's crucial that the architect has a way to create a detailed schedule and forecast the phases required to complete the project. It's also important that the architect has an idea of how much time will be spent on each of these individual phases. Luckily, architects have a tool called a Gantt chart. Simply put, a Gantt chart is a horizontal bar graph that subdivides a large task, making it easier to plan and forecast the completion of it. Now, Gantt charts can be a little bit too formal for what we need in our everyday life, but it will be a good foundation for our own time management. Now, let's look at you. Since this is an architectural channel, let's say, for example, that you are studying architecture and you have a midterm coming up in exactly one month. The first thing you want to do is list all the components or all the things that must be included for the midterm. For this example, I'm going to say that we will need four floor plans, one for each level, four elevations, one for each facade, two building cross sections, five process models, one main model, precedent studies, site studies, sketches, one exterior and one interior rendering, all mounted on a 36 by 72 inch board. Normally a student might hear that and be like, oh, I got enough time, so I'm gonna keep working on the design of my building. Two weeks go by, the student feels like their design is still not strong, but now they only have a couple of weeks left before the midterm presentation. Add a bunch of all-nighters, stress and anxiety, and everything starts to go downhill. Naturally, they will rush doing whatever they have and at the end, they will have an incomplete board that looks horrible. We want to avoid that, right? So I used to do this in my sketchbook all the time, but eventually I found that it was way more efficient to create these tables on Excel instead. That being said, feel free to do this in your sketchbook at first. I went back and recreated a sample for you guys, so head over to my description and you can download a Google Sheet version of this table for free. Now let's see how I made this and how you can use it for your own tasks. Keep in mind that this example shows architectural school work, but you can use this for practically anything. All right, so here we are on that Excel sheet that I uh, made for you guys, and it might look a little bit complicated, and, and I agree, it is a little bit complicated, but I'm gonna explain it to you. It's gonna be really simple once I'm done explaining it to you. And if this is way too much for you, then feel free to adapt this and use it in your sketchbook in a similar way that's more comfortable for yourself. But the first thing you wanna do is under task, you wanna write everything you have to do. So I mentioned that we need some floor plans, some elevations, sections, so on and so forth uh, we're also going to need to finish designing and we're also going to need to put the board together and of course there's a miscellaneous tab because there's always things we need to do that we can't really foresee once you have all these laid out second thing you want to do is estimate how long each of these is going to take so this one's going to take me 22 hours for example to finish my design and under notes i've written that i need to work on the design and under sections for example i i guess it's going to take me about eight hours and all i have to do is add more detail to them because they are done but they just need more detail and you're going to want to do this for everything here keep in mind that when you first do this your estimated time is going to be really off at first i used to be really bad at guessing how long things were going to take me but now i'm pretty accurate at guessing these these times just because of how often I, I've made these charts in the past. So once you have that set together, the next thing you want to do is think about what the order is going to be of these tasks. So for example, I can't have a render without the model or the design being done. So that's going to be usually last, right? First thing I do want to do is make sure I have those precedent studies, make sure I have those sketches. That's second. I do want to finish my design because once I finish my design, then I could create my plans, my elevations, my sections. So you're going to organize everything and it's out of order here, but you're just going to simply put 
a position next to the task. And that's gonna come in handy in just a few moments. So once you see that all this is done, the thing that I love about Excel and Google Sheets is that you're gonna notice that all these numbers add up automatically to 74. So if I were to change this, let's say to 20, you're gonna notice that this number changes to 88. And that's one of the main reasons why I stopped doing these in my sketchbook and started doing them on Excel sheets. So once you finish this area here called the time needed, we're gonna see how much available time we have. So that's basically the way you wanna think about it. how much time do I need versus how much time do I have? So un under this table, we're gonna find that we have our weekdays and our available time, and it's gonna work by week one, week two, week three, and week four, and we notice that our midterm is gonna be due in four weeks on a Thursday, for example. In case you didn't notice, this is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, all the way through Saturday, Sunday. And so what we want to do in this part is start to calculate how much available time we're going to be able to dedicate to our project. So let's say on Monday I have school and that day I can only work from 6 p.m. to 10 p.m., right? So I only have four hours that day. Let's say on Tuesday I have a shift that's very long, so I have to work all day and I'm only going to be able to dedicate two hours. So what I'm doing here is I'm basically saying how much free time I have. And again, the great thing about Google Sheets or Excel is that if I were to say, oh, Wednesday I actually could dedicate 10 hours, you're going to notice that this changed from uh, 24, changing that back to 10, now it's 30. So that is another great thing about automating everything. You're gonna want to do this all the way up to your midterm. So obviously after the midterm, it doesn't matter how many hours I have. And you're gonna notice that each week, the way that I've made this sheet, it tells you how much time you have available each week. So we have 24 uh, this week, we have 32 hours the second week, 16 and then our final week we have 10 hours and that automatically i'll change this again so if i were to change this let's say to 10 you're going to notice that the total amount here changes but so does the total time because it's adding up the amount of available time that we have each week so let me undo that and you'll see that it goes back to 10 here and the total time is 82. So if you just think about this logically, we need 74 hours to be able to complete all this, right? Because 74 is the addition of how long everything is gonna take. Now, we need 74 hours, but by calculating our weeks, we actually have 82. So we're fine, this is pretty good. If you are really good at estimating how much time things are gonna take you, then this is great because you're gonna have extra time to spare. Always make sure that your first few times doing this part, make sure to guess a little bit longer. So if you think it's gonna take you five hours to do a floor plan, put that it's gonna take you 10 instead. So once you have this part done, we're gonna move on to our final step. And this final step is gonna be the most complicated looking, but it really isn't that complicated if you think about it. So that part is over here, and that's just organizing ourselves. So this is an optional step, you don't have to do it, but if you do this, it really is gonna help you in organizing yourself. So you're gonna notice that we have week one, two, three, and four, and then we have these numbers here. And what those numbers are, they're automatically input depending on whatever we have here. So week one, we have 24, week two, we have 32, 16, and 10, and we're gonna see it's the same numbers. It's 24, 32, 16, and 10. So if I were to change this right here, let's say again, let's say 20, right? I can, I'm gonna spend all day working on Monday. This is gonna go up to 40, okay? This is gonna change to 98, and then this number is gonna change to 40, okay? So everything works together on this Excel sheet. Now that that makes sense, let's go back over here. So now we know that week one, two, three, and four, we have this available amount of time. And then we have this total number, and this total here. Now what we want to do is organize our tasks. So we have one through 11, and over here you're gonna notice that we have one through 11 as well. So these numbers correspond to the position number. What that means is that over here under task one, it, it's, it represents president studies under task two, sketches, and under task three, design, so on and so forth. So you're gonna notice that in my example, I pretty much said that my sketches and my precedent studies and my process models are done. That's why I highlighted them green. That again is optional, but that's just so that they are out of mind because I know I don't have to do anything. They are completely done. So really the first thing that I'm gonna have to do is my design. And my design is obviously gonna fall under week one. 
So under task three, we know that this design is gonna take us 22 hours, right? But week one, we have actually 24 hours available. So I could just simply plug in 22. And what ends up happening is that this number is then subtracted from this number. And then you end up with this. So what this is telling you here is that this week you have two hours that are available. Okay, so you completed one task because this here, task three, which is your design, which is gonna take 22 hours, that's already plugged into week one. And again, I added this here as a way to cross check yourself because things are, uh, once, once I start plugging more things in, it's gonna get a little bit more complicated. So this area here is just to make sure that task three, this number here has to equal this number here. So task four is a floor plan, right? And my floor plans are gonna take six hours to complete. But this week, I don't have six hours. I only have two hours, okay? So now this is what I was telling you. We need to make sure that this number matches this number over here. So I'm gonna go ahead now and bump it over to my next week. So I need to get this to six. That means I have four there. So this task is now complete and you can turn this green if you want to and this one green just to make sure that you're telling yourself that these numbers equal these numbers over here. And we'll do the same for all the other ones. Task five is your elevation. It's gonna take five hours and we can actually fit that into week two. So we'll do five there and that equals five. So we'll make sure this is green. Task six is gonna be our sections and that's eight hours and this is green. And I'm gonna go ahead and just do everything else and then I'll speed it, I'll speed up the video and just show you what it looks like at the end. So now I've gone ahead and completed this step and this is an optional step for you guys, but I just want to once again tell you what happened here. These are the tasks that need to get done and how long each of them are going to take. You're going to notice that I never went negative. If I, for example, messed up and I said that I was going to work 30 hours here, it went negative here. So you never want this to be negative. You always want this to be at zero because that means you're using up the amount of available time you have that week. So I went ahead and made sure that everything added up to zero. And the second thing I wanted to make sure is that my steps are adding up to. So my number 11 task, if I go over here, which is my putting together my board, I think it's gonna take me eight hours. And if we go over here, it equals eight. So you wanna make sure that again, these all these numbers equal all these numbers. And you want to make sure that these numbers here equals zero. Remember that this method is something that I developed throughout my years at school, and it's something that worked very well for me. What I recommend is that you try it out for a month or two and see how it goes. As you go along, you might find ways to evolve this method and to make it more suitable for you. The important thing is though, to always stay on top of your work. Get really good at estimating how long certain tasks will take you and plan ahead to see how much time you will have available to dedicate to get those things done. Before I end this video, I wanted to mention that over the last few months, I've been getting a lot of requests to make Revit content. Rather than make videos on random Revit topics, I decided to make an online class that specifically teaches you how to use Revit, even if you've never used the program before. I designed the program to go step by step, showing you how to go from nothing to a complete project, including architectural sheets. So head over to my description and click the link to find out more about it. For those of you that are more advanced in Revit, the course will still benefit you because I'll be uploading new lectures to it every week. So stay tuned for that. As always, feel free to reach out with any questions you have. Good luck, enjoy your studies, and I'll see you down in the comments.